Okay, I'm going to go over the basics of a hydronic system, a hot water boiler heat system. So this is a 95% efficient Navian uh, tankless and combi boiler. Um, it's uh, run off of natural gas and basically it heats up water and circulates it through the house through baseboard heaters and radiators. Um, so we got our gas line coming in here. We got a, a a T, a drip leg, to catch any sediment. Gas line goes in, fires, got an exhaust intake, and it goes through a heat exchanger and comes out the bottom here. This is um, the supply of the space heating side. This this is where it comes back from the other loop. So it comes out here, and this is the hot the supply side. This is a little air scoop. It basically pulls air and any air bubbles out of the system and this is a little uh, purge valve they call this a, a air separator and i think that's an air scoop and there's a little schrader valve on the top that you can psh, psh, open and uh, let some of the air out this is an expansion tank so amtrol makes good ones i believe it's 30 uh 30 pound 12 psi um and then you want to have a drain valve at the lowest point in the system. So then you go off. That's the main, the main branch. Um, and this would be secondary. So these are going out to zones. There's three different zones in this system. And they're controlled by pumps. Sometimes there's one pump and uh, there, there's a, a zone control valve that opens and shuts to control the zones. Um, and this one's by pump. So... When there's a thermostat upstairs calls for heat, it sends a signal down to this controller. There's a relay on there that clicks on, and it gives power to the pump. The pump turns on, and it gives a call to the boiler for heat. So it, it circulates water, and then it pumps water through the whole system. Same thing with the, the first floor. So I got first floor, second floor, and garage. Um, each thermostat individually basically controls these pumps and it just pump the pumps turn on when the heat's called so these are circulator pumps they they last a long time they're really high quality um, you want an isolation valve on both sides of them and a drain at the top so you can purge air and uh, feed the system with antifreeze if you need to these are check valves which aren't super necessary but with three zones three pumps it's it's a good thing to have if one pump turns on, it's not going to draw from the other side. It's, it's called ghosting. It, it will only pull from, from the supply side, from the main branch. Um, so, and you can, you can run PEX. I got PEX running out to my garage, or you can run copper, of course. So, um, this is a temperature pressure relief valve. If the temperature pressure gets too high, it'll purge out um, air. You want, every system's different. This is a temperature and pressure gauge. Um, cold, it runs about eight to 12 PSI, and then when it heats up, it's at, it goes to 20 PSI. So it's good to have a gauge in there. It's also good to have um, drains or um, hose bib connections so you can fill the system, flush it, purge it. Um, this is also a, a tankless water heater, so that's the tankless water heater side. Um, it's a, a shutoff switch. So the hot water goes through the system and it comes back on this side. These are the return lines to the boiler. You got a, again, you got a drain, a shutoff valve, and this is a, a Y. So there's a little filter in here, a little screen. You take this plug out and there will be sediment and debris in there and that filters the water before it get back, gets back to the boiler. Um, so they're, they're, you know, they're pretty complicated systems. Amateurs don't want to be installing these. Um, they can be dangerous and you, you really want a qualified plumber or technician installing a hydronic system. There's a lot of different safety checks and um, just a lot of different systems and specs and codes that you have to know. This install took me hours and hours of research and 
hours and hours of, of time installing. You got to be good at soldering. Um, so this main branch line, you want this to be at least a one inch line. I believe this is inch and a quarter. Um, so, so you can feed three, three quarter inch lines. Um, the two coming out of the boiler are one inch. So this is called a closed T. So you want, you want a T, you want um, flow between the two just in case there's something clogged on the pump end that the water could flow. It wouldn't be a deadhead. It wouldn't stop that way. It would flow back to the, back to the return to the boiler. And then for pressure reasons, you know, some of the, some of the pressure can come back into the boiler. So that's called a closed T and that's basics. There's um, different, uh, there's different specs on how far that needs to be away, how close it needs to be. Same with the air scoop. They want, they want it like eight inches away from, from the supply and they want it 12 inches away from the first branch line. So there's just a lot of um, specs and dimensions to know on these systems. And especially when we're working with gas, you want to pressure test it um, and, and leak, leak test it to make sure that it's not leaking any gas. Um, so, you know, a lot of people like radiant heat. It feels, feels good. It feels warm. You don't clean the air though. So that's the one drawback. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this.